Welcome back. I did win my rapid game last night, but it was another one of those cases where I gave away an advantage early on. My opponent had an advantage for a little while, and then through, a, through the help of my opponent's mistakes and or blunders, I got my way back and was winning near the end. At least I was pretty sure I was when my opponent resigned. And uh, I'm going to take a look and see what happened. I'm going to do the second part first, where I regained the advantage, and then I'm going to skip back to the beginning and see how I lost it and what I should have done instead. Hopefully you'll learn something something from this, and hopefully I will too. Let's take a look. This position, according to the eval bar, my opponent has a significant advantage here. Um, I think you can see the piece ranking right up there by the opponent's clock. They're up a whole piece. They're up a bishop at this point. So how did I take how did I claw my way back? What happened here? It was my opponent's turn. I had just taken something here. My opponent should have done something other than what they did. Now, what they did was put their bishop here. I think the reason that they put their bishop on d3 was to prevent me from castling. The problem, as I saw when they did that, is that it, it still allows me to castle just on the other side, because I haven't moved my king or either rook yet, so I have castling rights on either side. But that's the only thing I can think of that makes putting their bishop there make any sense at all on d3. But I wasn't going to castle kingside because I had just moved this pawn. It didn't make a lot of sense to me to put my king up on this op semi-open h-file. I know some people who are rated much higher than me and know a lot more about chess than I do do go ahead and castle on a side where the pawn has already been moved or sometimes where there's a whole pawn missing and they'll still castle into that. I'm not yet comfortable with that. In fact, I wasn't even comfortable castling over here because my c-pawn was missing. Because uh, when I do castle here after they play bishop to d3, uh, my king's just open. The only advantage that has is getting my rook out. And maybe I shouldn't have castled there. I don't know. But I'm going to turn on the engine here and see what my opponent should have played. My opponent should have played king to e8, getting it off of this file. Okay, that makes sense. Um, because basically when they put their bishop here and I castle, my rook ends up pinning that bishop to their king when their king is still there. So And they can't protect that bishop. So if I'm not mistaken, I ended up winning the bishop here in just a couple of turns. But they should have played king to e8 or king to e7, which I don't get king to e7 because that would block in their dark squared bishop. Or bishop to e6. I guess that would have made sense if they had to move their bishop somewhere. I don't know why they need to move the bishop. It's not blocking a pawn or anything else right now. And it's not about to be attacked that I can think. It would take me two moves before I could attack that bishop. I guess one thing that that would do is if I did castle this way or just bring my rook over to d1, then their king could just go behind the bishop and still allow that rook, their a rook, to get out. But what they did instead was here. It was castling queenside my best move. Oh, it's, it's a close call between castling queenside and playing rook to d1. I could have just played rook to d1, won the bishop without castling. But then would I have castled to the other side? I don't know. But it says those are the only two moves. And uh, yeah, you can see that Stockfish is really having a hard time determining which one of those moves is better. I don't remember how long I spent deciding on this move. We'll see as soon as I make the move when the clock changes. But I do know that once they moved there, it did kind of surprise me. Uh, obviously, I had already, I already said I wasn't going to castle over here because of those problems. But it seemed obvious to me to go ahead and castle here. I guess I can see why Rook to D1 would be better. Again, because my sea pawn is missing. But I'm glad that Stockfish uh, kind of agrees with me here. So I did castle queenside, which pins that bishop and basically wins it. Because again, they can't move it. They can't defend it. Now here, I my opponent did see that a check was coming, that I was about to win the bishop. It's stuck here on d3. Um, Stockfish says they should have, again, played king to e8 or bishop to e7 or bishop to d6. And those are all really close in the evaluation. I think for me, I think I would have played what they did, which was bishop to d6. That makes sense to me because it, it's, it is protected by a pawn. It gets it off the back rank. It blocks the coming check. Whereas just moving the king over, I guess it still, yeah, it does let their other rook out. That's one advantage of moving the king over, but I am surprised that it's listed as the best move. And I'm surprised that bishop to e7 is listed above this, bishop to d6. And, and it says we're about even here. They did play bishop to d6, and I, I only have one move that's not a blunder, and that was taking their bishop. Okay, they played one of their better moves here. 
I have a very slight advantage. Again, king to e8, king to e7, king to d7, and they did play one of those. I assume to connect the rooks and get the rook out. That's, that's what makes sense here. I'm not sure why they put it on another open file, though. If it had been me, I think I would have played king to d7. Well, I saw right here that, oh, they moved it to another completely open file. And so I thought playing rook to d1 here was my, uh, e1 was my best move, because then that would allow me to move the bishop anywhere and it would be check. But that's not among the best moves listed there by Stockfish. But it couldn't have been much worse, I don't think, because I, I don't think I gave up a huge advantage here. But bishop to d4 was my best move slightly, and king to c2 was just behind that. And a4, what does a4 do? I guess a4 prevents b5, because they might be thinking of playing b5 at some point to uh, come after my knight, maybe. But I can move the knight. Oh no, not there. Maybe I can't move the knight. But if they played this and this, then I could just put the knight there, maybe. I don't know. But bringing my rook over to line up with their king didn't really give my opponent a huge advantage. It kept us very close to zeros. And it says here they should have sidestepped one way or the other. Okay, I do like that because that's where I said I would have put it in the first place. So the fact that they're saying the king should sidestep to d7 or f7 tells me that my instinct back there was pretty good. d7 is a good square for the king. Okay, but they didn't move their king here. Instead, they brought their rook over. I guess hoping for a discovery here, something like this, to win my unprotected rook. But maybe they must not have seen this. And I should, oh, I should have just taken this pawn. Really? That was, that was my only move that wasn't a mistake, is just taking the pawn. I did consider that, because it would be check, so they couldn't take my bishop back. The king would have to move, and then I could retract my bishop. It says they would move there, and then I would bring the bishop all the way back to d2. Possibly, although that still leaves my rook undefended. Maybe that's why the engine was suggesting king to c2 earlier, because that rook is undefended. But I played my second best move here, which maintained a round equality, where we've been sitting uh, since my opponent's blunder earlier. Remember, my opponent's blunder was bishop to d3. So we maintained even for some time here. I'm going to just turn off the engine and play through the next several moves. They moved out of check. I took the knight. And you can see from the eval bar on your screen that we're still close to even. Um... They checked me. Was that my best move here? I don't know. Because the bishop, I mean, the, the rook was undefended. So I thought I did pretty good here by not taking the bishop and coming up to defend the rook when I got out of check. The eval bar didn't jump, so I assume that's among my best moves. They did. They took my rook anyway, and we're still close to even. And then they checked again. Now I, I have some choices here. Uh, obviously, I can move to any of these three squares or this one. In, in the heat of the moment, I had a hard time deciding which of those squares to move to. I, like, my instinct was to go back to c2. But then I thought, well, then they could come down here and check me. But then, remember, no, they can't because the knight's there. So I was kind of torn between these two. I wasn't yet ready to get my king out front. So it was between e2 and c2. And I think the reason that I chose e2 was because I might have a chance of coming back for this bishop. Wait. Now that doesn't make sense because I can take the bishop as soon as they don't, as soon as they quit putting me in check. Um... The eval bar didn't jump, so I assume that, again, is among best moves. Maybe, maybe it was equal. I don't know, because I didn't go there. Now I can take their bishop if they don't move it. I assume they're going to move it. Okay, they moved it. What's my best move here? I don't know. I, I mean, I saw this because they only moved back one. They, they only moved their bishop out of danger by one square. So I thought, you know, that can't be too bad. But okay, I see why that's not the best now, because they can just take this pawn. So should I have moved this pawn? Well, let's watch the eval bar. I probably should have played b3, but um, but anyway, we're still fairly close to even. They took that pawn. Oh, that was a mistake? That dropped us down to minus something. I'm trying to guess from the eval bar there. It looks like minus 2. I'm going to turn back on the engine here. Okay, minus 2.5. What should I have done instead? Oh, I should have just gone after the bishop, and then when the bishop moved, I would have gotten their beep on? Yes. Okay. That's the top line. But they still have a very slight advantage. But yeah, in hindsight, that makes more sense. I think the reason that I played rook to d1, which it says is a mistake, and, and it gives the opponent a significant advantage, my reasoning was that if they take, and I take, I think I can maybe stop a couple of those pawns. And these two pawns over here are separated, so that makes them hard to defend each other. I have a pawn majority over on the king's side, and I thought with my knight, I might be able to, and knight and king combined, 
might be able to stop one or both of those pawns. Um, but I thought I was still lost here. Uh, going back to the, the point at which my opponent blundered with bishop to d3. I didn't know that was a blunder in, until just now, going through this analysis. I thought I was still behind here and maybe scraping back, because my opponent is still a pawn ahead. They still have this queenside majority. Okay, so what should my opponent... My opponent should have taken my rook, according to the stockfish lines, but they didn't. And they didn't play king to e7 or king to e8 either, which would have protected their rook, which were the next best moves. They just moved it over. So that meant my mistake didn't matter anymore. But why would it have been such a, so bad for me if they took here and I would have taken... It says then they would have gone b bishop to d4. Oh, getting ready to, to protect their c-pawn push because that's a passed pawn. Even though it's still way back there, it's a passed pawn. There's no pawns in front of it and no pawns on adjacent files. So I guess that's why would, that would have been so bad for me is once they put this here, then I can't stop c5. And then that pawn is only four squares from promotion. And my, I guess Stockfish is saying my, that my king and knight would not be enough to stop it. Well, I thought it would be because, let's see. Oh, my king's going to be down there on d1. I guess I could get in front of it and then that pawn can't go anywhere, right? I'm not sure. But back to the game. They did that instead, which takes us back to even. Oh, that was my best move? Was that was my, Oh, that's the only move that's not a mistake. Okay, because they're aiming at my knight, which would be with check. So I had to protect the knight. Okay. But for some reason, going to d3 would have been bad. Oh, I guess that's because they could have checked me there. Okay, so this is kind of a no-brainer here now that I see it and, and think about it. Well, good for me for finding that. Kept us close to even. Now here they should have, according to the lines, put their rook there for some reason. Oh, to protect this pawn. Or, or just played a5 or b5. But they played f5, which apparently is just as good. It keeps us right at even. Tax my knight. We have to move the knight. Where should I move the knight? Well, that's bad. I didn't think uh, d2 would be good because then they could pin it. That's not good because they'll take it. That's not good because their bishop's sitting down here. I will admit I almost played it there, but I saw their bishop at the last second. And then I don't have anywhere else to put it. So knight to c5 is the only move that makes sense. And then they're supposed to attack it again with the pawn. What would I have? Oh, if they had done that, I just would have taken the a pawn, right? Yeah, that's what it says. But then they could have played c5 and they would have had two pawns getting closer all the time. But Stockfish thinks that with the rooks on the board, I would have a chance at stopping those pawns. You saw that when I went to trade off the rooks earlier, Stockfish said I probably didn't have a chance, but now it thinks I have a chance to stop those pawns. But instead, instead my opponent protected the pawn by bringing the rook over. Oh, and that, that was a huge blunder on their part. Is this where I, is this where I took the lead back? I don't think it is because, oh wow, I missed that. You, you see that, right? Okay. Um, that looks really obvious to me right now that I, I could have just won their rook. Or rook to b1 would have still given me a significant advantage because they would have... It says, look at that. Stockfish says they wouldn't move to save the bishop. They would then notice that their rook was about to be forked and they would move their rook over and then I would take their bishop over here on b2. So they would be down a piece at that point. So I had multiple ways to take advantage here. Even rook to d2 would have accomplished basically the same purpose. But it says if I, yeah, see, that's the third best because then they could have saved their bishop with tempo and I would have had to have brought it back and then they would have put their bishop back and then I would have done this. So why didn't I see that? I, I went after the bishop with my knight, which takes us back to even because it allows them to save their bishop. Okay, well, they saved their bishop. Well, now what do I do? Um, I didn't play the best move. Rook to d3. Well, that makes sense. Would have directly threatened the bishop and made it move again. But I played my third best move. What was I thinking? Where was I going? Over here? That, I, don't, I don't know what I was thinking there. I can't explain that move at all. But they did not play their best move. Their best move was c5. Now my best move is g4. What does g4 do? That would reconnect their pawns. If I played g4, they would take it. It says they wouldn't, but but I think they would. I think they would take. Oh, but then I, I would take back with my king, and I would have two connected pawns, one of which would be passed. Okay, that's why it wants me to play g4. It's an attempt to create a passed pawn. Actually, it might be a guaranteed creation of a passed pawn, although it says they would play bishop to b4 at that point, and then I would have to move my knight here, I suppose, and then they would take g4, and then I would take back. 
Okay, I don't know if that if all that would have happened, but but maybe if I had played G4 here. I didn't. I, I put the knight back where it was. That, that doesn't make any sense either, does it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, it did to me at the time. It doesn't here. It says that that was a mistake or, or an inaccuracy or something. But here I did see this. I remember this now. I went back there thinking, oh, I can hop in here and threaten that fork again. But that doesn't make a lot of sense because they would have plenty of time to see that coming. Well, that's what I played. It doesn't make a lot of sense. They should have played b5 here because that wouldn't that would have uh, kept me from playing knight to b b6 because the rook would then be protecting that square so yeah it says that if I, yeah, I would bring my knight back if they played uh b5 but they didn't play b5 and they didn't play bishop to e7 which is their second best move or even b6 which would protect the pawn with the rook they played rook to e8 taking away the advantage that they had Okay, so I still, this is still not where I gained the advantage back. Wow. And I should have played knight. Okay, I should have gone ahead with my plan. Oh, no, but I thought once they moved the rook, there was no point in it. Okay, well, I didn't do that. I went after the bishop this way, which I apparently should have done a few turns ago. But now it's a mistake because they can play this and their bishop's just fine. Oh, okay, but now I did play the knight to b6 move. Not sure exactly why it's, it was better for me to do it now, but I did. Okay. And they, what should they have done there? They should have played h5 or rook to e1. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what rook to e1 would have done other than allow me to check down there, but that's what it says. But instead they played king to g7, which brought us back to almost equal. And now I'm supposed to play a3 because the, okay, the rook would protect it and it would force the bishop to go somewhere. But then, nope, it's still changing its mind. But if I did play a3, wouldn't, wouldn't the bishop just go there and threaten my knight or here? And threaten my knight? I don't know. It says it wouldn't. It said it would play. Oh, it's. It says it would go to f8 if I played a3. I don't know. Or g4 again. It liked g4 earlier and it likes it now. But I checked, which is a mistake and gives my opponent minus 1.4. Wait, I did win this game, right? Did I pick the right game? I, I feel like I, maybe I didn't. Okay. They're supposed to just block me now because their, their bishop guards that square. And it says if they blocked me, I would just go back to where I was. I probably would have taken, which I guess would have been a mistake. Or just to get out of check by moving back. But they moved forward, and it counted that as a mistake. Wait, why would, why would going back be so much better than going forward? I don't, I don't know. Well, I took that pawn. Was that my best move? It was. Okay, good. So now these two pawns are separated. But this isn't where I won the game, because as you can see, we're still very close to zeros. But my plan worked there that I checked and then won this pawn. So now that the other the remaining two pawns over there are separated. So what are they supposed to do here? They're supposed to play rook to e7. Okay, still because it's guarded by their bishop. And, they're they, and it says I would take then if they did that. I Maybe I would. Maybe I would. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. I might move my rook here so that they would have to take me and I would get it with the knight. I, I don't know. But yeah, that's what it says that their best move is. But they played their second best move, which is to go after the knight first. Well, I moved it to one of the only safe spots that I could find. Now, you see what the engine is saying. They're, now they need to bring their rook all the way down here again. It wanted them to do that earlier, and I'm still not sure why. Because, oh, because I can't get close to it because their bishop's cutting off that whole diagonal. Okay. But still, what is it going to do down there? N none of my pieces are down there and aren't going to be. So... I, oh, I guess it could get behind this pawn, maybe? But, oh, it's changed its mind. Bishop to d4 or rook to e1 are about the same. And then does it say I would play rook to c7? Okay, that, that would be my next move in a couple of scenarios. Now, I was thinking about that because uh, they couldn't defend both of those pieces, was my thought. Okay. But they went there. That turns out to be a huge blunder. And it's a huge blunder because I have a protected check right here, which I found. Is that the only move? Yes, that's the only move. Oh my goodness. I guess they thought they were safe here because of this. But now they need to give up their rook or move their king to f6, which is what they did. Okay, it says that's their best move, is king to f6. That's what they played, but now I get their bishop for free. I'm curious. How bad would it have been if they went... Oh, it says it would have been really bad had they gone there. Really? Because I would have played g4 check? They would have taken... Oh, and then I would have got the rook. 
Oh, wow. Okay. See, I see in the game, I thought F6, I thought F6 was the blunder. Yeah. I thought coming here was the blunder. I thought if their, I thought if their king went there, what do I have? I didn't even think I had something here. But yes, it would have drawn the only defender of the rook and I would have taken the rook. Okay. But I thought them going to, to F6 with the king was the blunder because it allowed the fork, which it says is my only good move, which I played. And they need to go back to G6 now and let me take the bishop. But instead they went there, which was even worse because it lets me take the bishop with check and fork the rook too. And that's where they resigned. Okay, so I was wrong about where the blunder was. The blunder was putting the rook here. I thought the blunder was, was after that when they moved the king over. Okay, but yeah, so just backing up to right here, we were really close to even. And they should have played bishop to d4 for unknown reasons or rook to e1 for reasons I can't explain. If you've made it this far in the video and you understand more about chess than I do, which according to that survey I did is almost half of you. Like at least a third of my viewers are rated higher in, than I am in chess or at least as high as I am. So if you understand what bishop to d4 does because it doesn't aim at anything, right? Bishop to d4 doesn't aim at anything. I, okay, it centralizes the piece. Okay, never mind. I get bishop to d4. It centralizes the piece so it controls more squares than it does now. And it gets out of the way. It gets out of the way of the c pawn. Okay, I get bishop to d4. So explain to me rook to e1 then. Because I'm not going to put any piece down here for the rest of the game. So it's not doing that. Is it, is it to get behind this pawn? Because I can't protect that pawn. Is that all that is? But it, yeah, if you know, explain that to me. But they thought they were getting sneaky by coming in here guarded by this. And I found my only move, and then they played their best move, and I found my only move, and then they, they made another mistake here, which it counted as inaccurate, I think, but that had to be a mistake, because you saw the eval go from plus six to plus 13. Whoop, nope, it's back to plus six. 12, that had to be a mistake and or a blunder, because it allowed me to take the bishop with check, and that's where they resigned, so. Wow, so I, I, I'm glad I won. Now I'm going to go back. I know this is already, this video has gone on for way too long. Wow. I, you know what? I'm already here. I am going to go back. I'm going to pause this recording and I'm going to go back and try to find out where I lost it in the beginning. All right, here we are at the beginning of this game. I played D4. I'm just going to skip forward to the point at which uh, the eval bar drops and then I'll figure out what I should have done instead. Okay, we have come to the point at which I had a huge advantage, like plus 10 or whatever it was that you saw. You saw the eval bar was way up there, and now it's almost the opposite. Minus 6, minus 7. Um, that was a big mistake. My problem with this position is that I had two undefended pieces under attack by their queen. I was up a piece because they had blundered their knight out there earlier. Now it looked like I was going to blunder it back because I had left two pieces unguarded carelessly while I jumped in there with my queen and was chasing the queen. So I should have played something different. Okay, yeah, because I was beginning to worry that my queen was trapped. I couldn't get out here because their bishop is guarding that square. And of course, their king guards that square. Their king and their knight guard that square. Their rook guards that square. Their rook guards that square. Their bishop guards that square. And their pawn guards that square. So the only way I could slide my queen out was here. So yeah, I was beginning to worry about that. Uh, not all, And of course, worrying about these two pieces that... The bishop is protected by the knight, obviously, I think. I think that's obvious. But the knight's not protected by anything. So I figured they were going to take that knight. So what should I have done? Should I... I could have played f4 to protect the knight. Is that what I should have done? Uh, where's the engine? Let's turn the engine on. No, bishop to f... Wait, what? Sorry. I... The bishop would be undefended, wouldn't it? F4 is my third best move. Okay, um, I'm confused. My second best move is knight to g6. Okay, I get that that would aim at the rook. Knight to g6 would aim at the rook in the corner on h8, but then that would leave the bishop undefended. But it says they wouldn't take it. And bishop to f4, that would, and it says they wouldn't take it. Why not? Right? It, it's undefended, isn't it? I, I, even if I had seen that move, I wouldn't have played it. It's definitely, oh no, queen, queen captures f4 is popping. 
up into the... Oh, maybe I see it. It's getting out of the way of the rook. I don't... It doesn't matter if they take my bishop. Because it's getting out of the way of the rook. Rook to d1. Because if they take it, rook to d1. Or knight to g6. It says his way is kind of up there. Because that would be a fork of their rook and queen. But rook to d1 check. They have to block that with one of the bishops. This one? Right? Wait. Oh, they, they wouldn't block with that bishop because I would just take it, right? Because I would take it with either the rook or the knight. It says if I took with the rook, I would actually have made in 12. Okay, so they would block the check with this bishop, keeping in mind that this knight's undefended again. Oh, and then I would fork the king and the queen and rook, and, and moving their queen is not among their best moves. Even though that piece is undefended now, they would move their rook over to e8. This is, a, this is a little beyond me, and I hope that I haven't uh, had too many pauses here or dumb looks at the camera because I usually edit those out anyway when I got a surprised face at the camera because I'm not talking when I do that, so I usually edit out those silences. But anyway, I, I don't understand why they wouldn't take the bishop. Why wouldn't they take... Because that would be mate. Did that, that looked weird, didn't it? Okay, sorry. Because the... Oh, because the bishop's pinned. That's why that would be mate. Okay. So that's why they wouldn't take the bishop. That's why they would play rook to e8. And then I would take their queen. And then the, this position is so... Uh, okay, going back to where I was. I was here. They had just moved out of check. Bishop to f4. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten through all of that. I, not, I just wouldn't. But what, what about f4? It says that's my third best move. I think the reason I didn't play it is because then I couldn't castle. And I still wanted to castle. But once I played f4, then their, their queen would be pointing down there, and I couldn't castle. You can't castle into check. But I could have protected the knight with, with f4. So what if I had played f4? What would have been their move then? Knight to e4, it says. Oh, well, that would have been setting up checkmate, wouldn't it? Oh, but if they had played knight to e4, I just would have, I just would have captured it. And then they would have taken back with their queen, which would have been check. Oh, that okay, knight to e4 is not in the top three anymore. While, while I was considering it, it fell out of favor. Knight to d7. Wait, knight to d7 is one of their top two moves? That would block the bishop from guarding their e-pawn, and then I could take their e-pawn with my bishop, right? If they had played that. Oh no, it says I would go after their rook. I, w I wouldn't take this at all. Why would that be bad? Oh, that would be really bad because, oh, because then they could take my knight, and I would take the knight, and they would take here with check. I, I think Stockfish is... <laughs> is thinking my opponent may be a better player than they were, but is, I certainly didn't see that, and I don't think my opponent would have either. Okay, so that, but that is, that is where I lost, or would have lost had my opponent not given it back to me a few moves later, as I showed you at the beginning of this video. Well, I'm glad I continued playing, and I'm glad my opponent blundered near the end so that I could get a victory out of this, but, but I do feel that this position got too complicated too quickly. There were too many variables. Uh, for example, my knight hanging. If I moved the knight, my bishop would be hanging. I was afraid to play the f-pawn because then I couldn't castle. Also, their queen was somehow sitting in the middle of the board amongst all my minor pieces, completely safe. But in hindsight, I, I think I did learn backing up where, where was it? Right here. I think I got that. That if they had taken it, I would have been able to bring my rook over, discards the, guards the knight, and it's not in their best interests to take. And I could directly threaten their queen, and they couldn't move the queen because it would be check. So I think I did learn something there. Anyway, uh, this, again, this went on a lot longer than I intended it to, and I apologize for that. But if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, uh, and we'll see you next time.